DS have at times hilarious dialogue. What does it take to build a good NPC dialogue? The main thing is to make them reactive. A lot of times when you write characters for movies or things like that, you want to make that character interesting for themselves, right? What's their story? And there's some characters like that that the player definitely cares about, but the best characters are the ones that react to you.、Mm-hmm. So you'll find a lot of people love our guards, and the guards are written almost purely to be reactive. Hey, nice tie! I like your jacket. Do this cool watch. You know, hey, what'd you do? And so that hey, you're the man. As you walk by, that makes them interesting, or the way they react to something that you do. Lydia in Skyrim, who everybody loves, I'm sworn to carry your burdens. That's a generic line that all of the you know house carls have, and it just kind of lands when she says it. Why does it land? What do you? What do you? Do, and did you anticipate it would land? There's a slight snarkiness in that particular read of it, and you're asking her to do something, and she's reacting to you. What about the the trade off between maybe the randomness and the scripted nature of the dialogue? Like, is there any room for randomness of the dialogue tree? Oh, absolutely. We tend to write them in stacks. With you know, it, it, it's a it's a very small. Think of it as a small state machine that just says, "Okay, this is what's happening. Here's a random list of things I could say to that, and then some of that、um, plays out in ways you don't anticipate. But we look at the things. What are the players doing that we could have the characters respond to that they don't expect? You know, jumping on tables or stealing stuff or Um, you know, sneaking in in the middle of the night, or those kind of things. The more that we can do, the more reactive and interesting the characters appear. And these state machines, how big are these things? Are these individual to the individual characters? It's just fascinating how you design state machines. Is it just a just a giant? Would, I would think of the AI as one big one. Yeah. Oh, so, for for sort of everybody. So there's an AI. There's a manager a, for all the people. Yeah, and one of the <laughs> things the people that, manager, right, manager. Right, right. <laughs> nice. One of the things that makes what we do particularly unique is, and this is a trade off for what people are seeing because a lot of it's not on the screen, but we're using cycles to run this, which is we're thinking about everybody in the whole world、mm-hmm. all the time. The ones that are further away, at a much less tick rate, they go into low. But we know if they want to walk across the world, and we're running every quest at the same time.、Yeah. Whereas in other open world games, you start an activity, the rest of the world's going to shut down, so that they can really make that as impactful. We're, I, I really prefer that the rest of it's going on. It's more of a simulation that we're building, so. When those things collide, that's where it gets the most interesting. And so we're running all of those people and understanding where they want to go and their cycles and what they want to do. And the ones that are closer to you, we just update a lot more. It's one way to think about it. I mean, th- that's really fascinating. That's something that people had、uh, they were wondering about: to what degree it's possible to run the world without you. So there is a. F- Feeling to role playing games that you're the central, you're at the center of the world, and the whole world rotates around you, as it does in normal life. Like when we walk around,、right. it, there's a when you forget yourself, you start to take yourself very seriously. Like you are the center of the world.、Uh, you forget that there's eight billion people on Earth, and you forget that they have lives. That's actually a sobering realization that they all have really interesting life stories, and they have their worries. They suffer in different, complicated ways. And yet, when you play a role-playing game, there's a—I mean, both computationally and from a storytelling perspective—you wonder if the world goes on without you. Like, if you come back, if you take a break and you come back, is there still a bustling t- town that now has a history since you have last visited? So, to what degree can you create a world that goes on without you? 
or goes on at the same time as you do your thing, whatever the heck you're doing? We don't prioritize the stuff you can't see. So it's more like an amusement park. If you study like the design, our level designers did this, how do they build Disney World in these places? So it still exists for you, the player. So it is fairly, you know, when you're going to come in, this is what you're going to see. The shops are in the front. You're going to do this. It's just for us to make it far more believable and get some more emergent behavior that not just make that sort of the verisimilitude of what you're in for that moment, but you you buy it all. Mm -hmm. I always say like, you know, we got to do the little things so that you buy the reality of the virtual world you're in. So we want to do something crazy, you know, when a dragon lands or a death law comes out of the wasteland or those kind of things that you, it has the impact to you as the viewer that it would to the people in the world. Okay. But still, you are simulating stuff that's close to you. It is a bit of a simulation going on. Oh, absolutely. Yes. And, and so that creates some interesting dynamics then. And the stuff that we're looking at in the future, you know, our plan is to push that even more, to think about how these things exist in the world first. And we do some of this, but even more so in the future to say, how do these things exist? Take like a faction in the world. What is their role in the world as opposed to just their role is for the player to join it, go through a bunch of quests and become the head of the faction. You know, think a little bit deeper about the simulation and what would the Mages Guild be doing in a fantasy world or the Fighters Guild be doing in a fantasy world versus just sign up, do quests, get gold. And so that when you show up to that Mages Guild, it's a bustling guild full of stuff going on. It's not just that it's bustling, it's that they feel rooted in it. They don't feel like a storefront for come here, do quests, get experience. 